Hey, thanks for joining me today. This is Pastor Lafayette. We're in Acts chapter 8. Uh, it's Monday, and uh, we're going to start in verse 14. I want to get into another, another story, but I wanted to go back on this just a bit. So we're going to pick up in verse 14. So open your Bibles. I read out of the New King James Version, Acts 8, verse 14. Uh, now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now we talked about this a little bit on Friday. Uh, they laid hands on these people. They had been uh, saved, water baptized, but not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that's the way this, these verses read. And so they come down and lay hands on them. You can't say they were saved unless they'd received the Holy Spirit. It would be foolish to baptize people in water who had not really been saved. So we're talking about a second event here, another event besides salvation. So they laid their hands on them, they received the Holy Spirit. Now some could just say, all right, they put their hands on them, and then they received the Holy Spirit, and they went home. But I want you to hear something here. Something powerful took place. Verse 20. I'm sorry, verse 18. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Now I want you to get this for a second. We're talking about Simon the sorcerer who had done a lot of uh, weird, crazy things before Philip showed up. And when Philip showed up, Philip, uh, people were healed. Things were happening. People were being delivered. People were getting saved. He's preaching. They're believing because they're seeing these great signs and wonders. But you never read about Simon offering money. But when he sees these, these two great men of God, Peter and John, come down, lay hands on people. It, it, they didn't just lay hands on them and say, receive the Holy Spirit. And the people said, well, thank you very much. And they walked home. My friend, something big happened. Something so big that he offered money for this thing. He didn't offer money to heal sick people or blind eyes opened, though it was miraculous, yes, though it was powerful, yes, though it was amazing, yes, but he didn't offer money for that. But when he saw them lay their hands on them to receive the Holy Spirit, he offered them money for that. It wasn't just some silent thing that kind of took place between you and me and they walk off. He saw something happen. Now we know from two previous passages <clears throat> that um, that the Holy Spirit I'm sorry, I think I jumped ahead. I, I, we, we know from Acts chapter 2 the other passages in Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 2 that the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with other tongues and began to uh, speak out loud in tongues. We, we know that that happened in Acts chapter 2. And so Apparently, they thought it was so important, they sent two of the best, biggest wigs from general headquarters in Jerusalem down to these people in Samaria so they could, because there's such a, 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 a tremendous, uh, just a outpouring of God's Spirit, a revival in this area. God's doing something great that they send them down, lay the hands on them so they could receive the Holy Spirit. That right there brought the attention of Simon the Sorcerer to, a, to such a, a height, a, such a level, that he said, guys, listen, man, what, did, what would it cost? What can I pay you guys to give me this gift? Do you understand how powerful this is? This is a really, really big deal. The baptism of the Holy Spirit was a big deal to the council at Jerusalem. It was a big deal to Peter and John. And I don't have any idea why Philip didn't operate like that. I don't know anything about it. I don't have any right to even presume. I really don't know. 
But it was so important that they sent two big wigs down, and when they did what they did, they were offered money for it because it's such a powerful move of the Spirit of God. Think about that. Think about that for a minute because that's, that's, that's amazing. We always say that the Pentecostal church is always major in the minors. Why are we always making it such a big deal about the baptism of the Holy Spirit? We're majoring on the minors. Well, apparently it's enough of a minor to get Peter and John to come from Jerusalem just to take care of the business that needed to be taken care of. It is important. It is valuable. It is needed. It does not save us anymore. But it is believed that it is a greater, a further equipping, a further enabling to be able to, 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 to do certain things, act in certain ways, and see greater things accomplished on this earth. It's important. Peter and John showed up. Consider that, please. Father, I pray for those who are listening today, Lord, that they would understand the importance, the value of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that, Father, that if, if they are not baptized in the Holy Spirit and, and they don't have the evidence that was given to the original 120 or so in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, I pray that, Father, that as they begin to pray today and begin to seek you, Lord, that you would baptize them in the Holy Spirit with that very same evidence as proof to them that you have done an amazing work in them. Father, touch and minister in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.